Now, after studying aldehydes method of preparation, we'll like to see the method of preparation of ketones. Now, we'll again start with some of the reaction that we already know in the chapter of hydrocarbon and then we'll still go for new reactions. One of the reaction that we studied in the chapter of hydrocarbon was acylation. We call it then federal craft acylation. What happens in federal craft acylation is we, if we have a benzene, it can be substituted benzene as well, but if we, if we just take benzene and if we take a carbonyl chloride, and a Lewis acid like AlCl3. Then, in this case, the product would be acetophenone. How it happens, we all know that. So this is a method of preparation of ketone. This AlCl3 snatches Cl- and we get a acylenium ion, a plus charge on this carbon and this plus charge and there's a lot of electronic density so benzene offers its electron. Suppose I break one pi bond as plus and minus, then this C plus and this C minus forms a bond. And this acylenium group comes here. Now aromaticity has been destroyed. So we have to restore aromaticity because reaction occurs to produce stability and aromaticity is the biggest factor to generate stability. So breaking the aromaticity is not a good idea because that will not end up in generating more stability. So if the reactant is aromatic, product necessarily has to be aromatic. So to restore aromat aromaticity, if there's a plus charge, a pi bond has to be generated here. If there's a plus charge on this carbon, there has to be a negative charge on this carbon. So that plus minus forms a bond. To generate a negative charge on this carbon, see this carbon has a hydrogen. All these six carbon has hydrogen. We don't show that. So there's a hydrogen on this carbon. If a base comes and abstract this hydrogen as H+, plus, then this carbon will have a negative charge and this negative and this positive will form a bond like this. This is same as this, all right? So this is acylation. There could be benzylation similar to acylation. For example, if we don't take acyl chloride, if we take benzyl chloride, then in this case we will have benzophenone as our product. Now mechanism will be exactly the same as it was in the case of acylation. This is benzylation. Right? So uh, mechanism would be same, in this case we have benzophenone, remember this compound is called benzophenone, last one was acetophenone. We have seen this long time before, so uh, shouldn't be a problem. Reaction number one, benzylation, acylation. Next reaction is when we take a acyl chloride or a benzyl chloride for that matter and we make this acyl chloride or benzyl chloride to react with dialkyl cadmium. Now this we have seen before. When we studied Grignard reagent, parallel to that Grignard reagent, I have taught you dialkyl cadmium. This is also an important reagent and when I taught you dialkyl cadmium, I taught you this reaction. But then we studied this as a reaction of dialkyl cadmium and now we are studying it as a method for preparation of ketone. But uh, uh, we have seen this already but I will quickly recapitulate you what this is. Dialkyl cadmium is like this. Cadmium has a two unit of plus charge. This alkyl group has one unit of negative charge. Now this is similar to that of Grignard reagent. In Grignard reagent, you have one unit of negative charge on R group and two unit of positive charge on magnesium ion and one unit of negative charge on halogen. 
So this is RMGX what we write. This is Grignard reagent. Now in both case, in case of dialkyl cadmium and Grignard reagent, the reacting part is this R minus because negative charge here on R minus is on carbon and that is unstable. So this is effectively the part that goes for reaction. Now the important thing to understand here is magnesium is a S block metal, cadmium is a D block metal. The shielding effect, the shielding in cadmium is less, the shielding in magnesium is more. So because shielding is less, the attraction for the outer electron from the inner nucleus is more in cadmium than that in case of magnesium. Now the shielding effect we have seen a lot many times and I hope you know what the shielding effect is. Shielding effect is simply this is a nucleus and these are shells. Now if there are more electrons all over, now if there is an electron outside, then there is a kind of detachment from this nucleus to this electron. So this outer electron will not have much of attraction from the inner nucleus if there are more electrons in between. If that electrons are more diffused, then the, then the detachment would be less and the outer electron will have a greater attraction from the inner nucleus. This is shielding. So if shielding is less, then the attraction faced by the outer electron will be more. So in case of d-block metals, the shielding is less. So in this case, attraction for the outer electron is more. So the, like, the negative charge, which is that on R group, that will be more tightly held, that will be more attracted by the nucleus of cadmium. In this case, the negative charge will be comparatively less attracted by the nucleus of magnesium because shielding is more. Now if this attraction is less, then this negative charge is less tightly held. And this R minus, the carbon, is more burdened by carrying that negative charge. So that this is less stable. So this is react, will have a faster rate of reaction. In this case, that negative charge is attracted by the nucleus more. So this is more stabilized. So this is more stable. So rate of reaction would be less. Right? All right. So the rate of reaction is such that it reacts with carbonyl chloride because here in this case the carbon is more reactive because chlorine has a del negative charge and chlorine attracts more electron. In this case this R group has a stabilizing effect instead of pulling up the electron it gives the electron to C. The del plus charge here in this case will be considerably less suppose it is del 1 plus this is del 2 plus then this del 1 is less than del 2. The charge on this carbon is more because of the pulling of the, the electronic density by this chlorine. So this is more reactive. So dialkyl cadmium has such reactivity and it is able to react with carbonyl chloride but it's not able to react with ketone. So another R- doesn't pops up and attack this carbon because this is less reactive, this is also less reactive. Weak acid, weak base, rate of reaction is less, or reaction is less. Similarly, it's a weak nucleophile, it's a weak electrophile, so reaction does not occur. It's a weak nucleophile, it's a strong electrophile, so reaction occurs. Here, reaction does not go further. That's the bottom line. So, what we have, we have a ketone from a acyl chloride using dialkyl cadmium. Important reaction, know this.